Yo so one could have it says come to a close. We're here with the winning interview. First of all, Flusha, congratulations on the win. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, it feels great. Like, but we should probably have won earlier. So, but I still feel good about winning. So, so how did the team feel with the veto process? Uh, first of all, uh, did, were you uh, comfortable with uh, with all the maps that that uh, panned out in the end? Um, we weren't. That sure about dust too. We knew we knew where we were gonna play it, but we didn't know how good we were not because we haven't played it officially since uh, a while back. So, mm -hmm. and uh, we we didn't uh, know if we want to play cash or cobblestone or picket. I mean, but we ended up on cash because me and JW doesn't want to play cobble. We feel not sure about how to play it, so. Um, we probably could have played better on cash. We got into a mindset that we should like only go A, so pretty much lost on that. So, but it all worked out in the end. Uh, so, how much have you actually prepared for, for, for NIP in particular? Because, uh, as you said, you were in, you didn't really know what to play against them if cash were cobblestone, and we saw that on cash they were very strong against NVS. Uh, they even chose terrorist side uh, because they were so confident on it so uh, my question is how much did you prepare for NIP specifically before the match and well in your preparations before the tournament uh, actually this was the most uh, planned event for us we like we got an analyst we got manager we watched demos of all the games mm -hmm. all the games we all the opponents we're gonna play and uh, we got into the game really prepared on dust 2 and inferno but cash we didn't we didn't plan that much really so that might have been the reason why we lost the moment uh, so how different was this uh, was this team nip to uh, to what you've played against them uh, before how do you think how much do you think alu has contributed to to the change of play style that they have right now uh, I think he contributes a lot. Like I think the chemistry is uh, really good between them now. Something they might have missed since they played with Fifth Iron. And uh, I think if they keep playing with Alu, they can go far and maybe get to the very top again, be the best team. And uh, other than that, he plays. He played really well in the final. So I think they're gonna st stick with him and. Just keep playing. So on the in for now, you were up 15-8, and it took you five or six rounds to uh, to actually win that one round. Uh, in every one of those rounds, you took it really slow. You took it uh, like to the last 20-30 seconds every time. Uh, so what was the thought process in uh, in, in those uh, last rounds? What did you think throughout throughout the last rounds? Um, pretty much all the rounds we lost were real close or they were ecos so we just tried different things all over the, over the place and uh, we knew we were gonna get one round eventually but they just had a lot of luck in the rounds and uh, how they won it and um, we just felt we, we were gonna win it in the end so if you had to pick one player that stood out for you from your team uh, and maybe also from the other teams, uh, like one player from your team, one player from the other teams that stood out for you uh, in the whole tournament. Uh, in my team, everyone played good, but Olof Meister, this event, and uh, other teams. Jetright was doing an amazing job against us. He picked us apart on cash, so we couldn't do anything on, on our T side there. And yeah, I, I can't remember the other games. Like Neo played really well this tournament. Uh, other than that, see you show. So what's uh, what's in the future for you guys? Uh, what kind of tournaments uh, do you plan on attending? Except for the ones that we right now know, uh, for example, ESCA. Um, right now, I don't actually know uh, about any tournament uh, except for ESCA, but. For now, we're gonna have to take a week or two two weeks break, and uh, then we're going hard for Isaiah. Uh So, how 
right now we don't know what kind of major uh, will be next. Uh, obviously, there's ESL One Cologne, uh, but that's not specifically a major. It's uh, it's a 250k tournament as well. But um, how are you going to prepare for that one? I know it's it's pretty far away, but uh, what do you think is going to happen in the next uh, five months for this team? Uh, for our team? Yeah. I think we're going to keep just keep playing good, keep dominating online, I guess. Uh, I can't see us changing that much, actually, because we don't have any problems, to say. Like, everything works good except, except for us not hitting our shots. So, I can't say anything to improve on at the moment, but there might be coming problems uh, eventually. So I, I can't say what we have to improve on and what we have to uh, look over. All right, that's that's pretty much it for, uh, for me. Congratulations, congratulations once again. Are there any last words, shout outs? I want to thank the sponsors, Fnatic, our analyst Vugo, Patrick Karn and uh, the fans in Poland is so great. I also want to thank the, pa the fans. And that was ESL1 Karavice 2015. With this, we'll be almost closing our, our, our coverage. Uh, we still have some more photos and, and other uh, coverage to, to bring you, so keep up with hltv.org.